guys, I'm Maddie and this is my lockdown hair. I'm a singer, I sometimes refer to it as being my spirit instrument, usually when I've had a few wines. But singing is an instrument that everybody has already and most people sort of know what they're doing with it. Despite that, so many people say that they wish they could sing better. So there are a few things that I've discovered to make your voice sound more confident, more polished and more consistent. So I want to share these ideas with you right now so you can improve your singing without having to see a teacher, without having to go to a lesson, right now. So a really quick and easy way to improve your voice noticeably is to make sure that it's warmed up. So you'll notice when you wake up in the morning, if you tried to sing straight away, it's not going to sound good. It's going to be like... <laughs> the simplest way to warm up your voice is just to make random noises. You can pretend to be a siren. Or you can do like a creepy sound from that film. What's the film? Uh, what film is that from? The Exorcist. Maybe. Could be. So noises is the first thing to get your voice going because it's literally just getting the muscle working. If you want to move on beyond that, you can do exercises, little scales where you run up and down like la 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 la, stuff like that. It's quite good if you do it with a hum because that's a lot easier for your voice. And then if you really want to like push it a little bit further, especially if you don't play an instrument to accompany yourself, there are a few good apps that you can use, such as this one. I like to use this app when I'm either in my car, because when you're in the car you've kind of got your own space to practice in and it's not so embarrassing, you've got your own sort of practice room within the car, or in the shower is also really good because the humidity in the air is really good for your voice and also the acoustic in there sounds very nice. And another time I like to do it is when I'm putting my makeup on, because that's the sort of thing that I'm doing often before I'm about to go out and sing anyway, and so I like to tie the two things together. Another good way to see an improvement in your voice is to just make sure you're singing things that you really love. There is no point in trying to sing stuff that doesn't make you happy because it will come across in the way that you sing it. Singing is supposed to make you happy. So choose a song that you know really well and record yourself singing it so then you can actually listen back and analyse what you were doing. So audio recording is really good, video is even better. I know it's cringe, look at me right now, probably watching this back going... It's really important when you're singing to tell a story. Every song is like a miniature story that you are trying to tell to your audience, whether they are live in front of you or just listening. And there's nothing more boring than a flat, expressionless performance. Take into account that what you feel is probably really overdoing it will not come across that way to your audience. You can up it by 10%, 20% to convey your emotion. With sound recording, all the visual cues of your face and your body language are gone. So you need to work a little bit harder to convey the emotion. So if you imagine the difference between a normal phone call and a video chat. With a video chat, you can see the person's face. It's a lot easier to pick up on their expressions, that sort of thing. With a phone call, far more likely to lead to misunderstandings. So brainstorm some visual ideas to help you convey the feelings in the song. It might be particular memories. It could be a visualisation of a place or a person. For my song called Intimate. Intimate, into it. I made myself a great big brainstorm of all the sort of visual imagery from the song. So the sun shining on us, black and white photographs of like romantic walks on the beach, that kind of thing. I imagined the memories that inspired the song and I tried to fill my head with all of that while I was singing the song, while I was recording it. During the course of recording that song, I also spoke to my friend who's an actor and learnt some techniques from her so that I could really amplify my emotion in the performance of that song. Try looking up YouTube videos of acting techniques. Another thing I learnt from this friend, my guru, my lovely friend Panar, is about the importance of rituals before a performance. So it's something I noticed myself when doing gigs, I really needed the time, the quiet time alone, to put on my makeup, warm up my voice and get ready for the show. If I was stuck in a situation where there was a lot of noise going on, a lot of people trying to talk to me, or I just couldn't get myself in like a space to do that ritual before the show, it would affect my performance. 
when I sit down to work on production, I have a ritual of lighting an incense stick, which is something that I've picked up from my co-producing with Charlie Francis. That's something that we do together when we're about to sit down and start working. So it signals, it's the cue to start the work. Having a cue before you do something is a really important element of habit formation. Think about Pavlov's dog. They were trained to hear a bell ringing and know that it meant food. So my friend Panar, who is stone cold, amazing at acting, once had to play a woman who was dying of dysentery, I think, which is pretty bad. But before she went on stage, she had these objects and pictures that she would surround herself with to really, really get herself into the character so that she could really inhabit it when she was on stage. And then afterwards, it was really important that she did the reverse and got herself back out of character again. Different people have different strengths. So in school, I was good at things like maths, really bad at things like sport, running, throwing balls around, that kind of thing. Fitzy, behind the camera, really good at making roasties, really bad at finding his wallet. Think about some of your favourite singers. They don't try and do it all, all of the time. Billie Eilish, her strength is her really soft, really whispery, like ASMR style vocal. What do you want from me? Christina Aguilera does the huge, singing all the notes, all of the time. <laughs> David Bowie took his really unique voice and made it into an iconic sound. Bowie. <laughs> this doesn't mean that you can't experiment, but it's a good idea to work out what it is that you're really good at. So I naturally have quite a big range. I can sing quite low, low, and quite a big range of dynamics, sort of loud and soft. So I like to use these things in my music. I do not try to rap. God, no. I don't try to sing like Christina Aguilera. <laughs> you will very quickly exhaust yourself if you try to blast absolutely everything. Good breathing and good technique is way more important than using loads of breath, especially with high notes. People tend to try and blast them with a lot more air, but you actually need a lot less air for high notes, which is weird. So your vocal cords, like this, act like a zip. So when you're singing low notes, they're quite open like this and a lot of air can fit through. But as you go higher, they zip up like this and you need actually less air. So if you try and blast loads of air through there, it's like wind burn on your vocal cords. And that's when you lose your voice and it goes all raspy and horrible. Also, really over the top singing all the time is pretty exhausting for the listener. They need a little bit of light and shade. I'll come back to that later. So make sure that you warm up, make sure you take breaks and make sure that you can hear what you're doing so that you don't try and overcompensate. So when you're thinking about your accent and your pronunciation, it all depends on what you're trying to achieve. Different styles and different genres suit different things. A lot of people sing in this weird sort of American accent because so much of the music that you hear, that you've grown up with and that you've absorbed is either sung by American singers or people who are also sort of imitating that accent. The most important thing about the way you sing is for it to feel genuine to you. So if you sing in your own accent, like your speaking accent, your regional accent, your Welsh accent, then that might be a choice that you will make to make your music sound genuine to you. Other types of singing, like musical theatre, for instance, they might sort of require that American accent. I realised with my own music that I was singing with more Americanism than I really wanted. So I would step back and say each line out loud before singing it, before recording it, to see how I would actually pronounce the words when I speak and then try and sing it like that because I didn't want my music to come across with an American accent because I'm not American, don't know if you've noticed. Obviously when you are singing it's slightly different to when you are talking because you extend vowels so you'll be more likely to change the vowel sound slightly. In my song All Work and No Play, when I sing All Work and No Play see the A in play, I had to extend the A, I didn't want to get to the Y on the end too soon because all work and no play sounds bad. The same is true of consonants. You might need to soften them or sort of adjust how you say them slightly so that they don't come out really forcefully, unless that's the style you're going for. So with the same example of all work and no play, all work and no play, it doesn't sound right, does it? So it is really, really worth recording yourself and listening back. 
Time to put the kettle on, I think. actually pretty misleading because caffeine is really not the best thing for your voice. Caffeine, dairy, spicy food, booze, they're not your friend if you want your voice to behave itself. So either try and avoid them completely, not that realistic, avoid them on the day that you've got to sing, more realistic, or just cut them out from like a couple of hours beforehand, which is what I tend to do. Make sure if you've got a long, intensive amount of singing to do, like a long set or a long rehearsal, that you do take breaks. And during the breaks, try not to use your voice too much. So if you're doing two sets at a gig, try not to talk too much in the break. Use that time to give your voice a little bit of a rest. But the most important thing is water. Drink water. Do it. Drink water. Not fizzy drinks, not juice, not weird stuff that pretends to be water but isn't chuck it in the bin. Water. You need to be hydrated. That is one of the most important things for your voice. Use your common sense. You're going to have to sing through less than perfect situations sometimes, but if you try to control as many of the elements as you can, you're giving your voice the best starting point. Really amazing vocal performances are usually marked out by contrast. So there might be a section near the end where suddenly the vocal is very high, where it was much lower beforehand, or the verse might be a lot quieter and then the chorus a lot louder. It could be to do with the timbre of the voice. Ooh, fancy French word. The timbre is the tone of your voice. So the timbre of a guitar and the timbre of a violin are very different. Different people's voices have different timbres, but you can also sing in different timbres just according to the emotion that you're putting into it. You might do a very gentle and dreamy verse. You might push it into a really forceful, ecstatic chorus. If you have a returning section in the song, you could try varying the melody slightly or varying your rhythm. In general, it's quite a good idea to try playing around with your timing anyway, because nothing's more boring than just singing everything on the beat. Let's dance. Put on your red shoes and dance the blues. Amazing vocals can be elevated to even higher levels with really great production and live sound, but don't rely on these things. They are not magic tricks that are going to save a poor performance. So focus on getting the performance that you want first and not relying on fixing it in the mix later. I'm going to make another video about vocal production techniques, not just the more obvious stuff like EQ and reverb and that sort of thing, but also interesting things that you can try to make your vocals sound more unique and exciting. Have you got any singing tips of your own that I might find helpful? Have you got any like warm-ups that you like to do? Any weird exotic teas you like to drink? Any super creepy rituals you like to do before singing? Leave your ideas in the comments below and then we can all judge whether you're super cool or super weird. So, thank you for joining me. I hope you found those tips useful. If you like the video, give it a like. You could even share it with a friend. Is that really passive aggressive? <laughs> share it with a friend and be like, please sing better. Cheers guys, see you next time. I can make you stronger. Ooh. If you can just get past the door.